time for the weekly What the Hell is Sam Doing With His Hair uh, show. <laughs> Mother factors! Hello, you lovely cult of oddballs! I'm Sam and welcome to 101 Explains, where I go through all your comments like Santa with a naughty and nice list, wondering which ones to answer, which ones to reply to, and which ones will haunt me until my dying days. This week's Slicer 141 kicks us off and asks, I've always wondered why I have 11 fingers and the kids at school have nine. Uh, is your school located near or perhaps inside a nuclear power plant? Any chance? Because that's, that's not normal. Anyway, Terra Emotus quizzes. I've always wondered why does Sam look so weird? Like he doesn't even look human. Hey, dude, that's, that's hurtful, you know, enough of that. Come on. Clive, is this you? Oh wait, Clive's not here, I forgot. Clive's on some sort of poetry retreat with the members of Salt and Pepper. David Cheeseman, now there's a man that's gonna cheer me up. David Cheeseman asks, I've always wondered why Sam looks like a gerbil with a hat. David, what is that about? I don't even... Okay, there's a slight resemblance, but why would you say something like that? I mean, all this meanness is coming up just because some guys commented that I look handsome and... Oh. If I, if I could time travel, I would go back and not do that bit in the last video. I just wouldn't do it. Hang on, speaking of all that, what's this MR is asking? Ah, oh, this might be a good one. Because MR asks, I've always wondered. If time travel is possible, and if it is, why haven't we met anyone from the future? Ah, oh, time travel, that thing that anyone who's ever accidentally winked at a girl in a petrol station before knocking themselves out with one of the pumps has desperately prayed to exist. Specific, yes, but I can't be the only one who's done that. <laughs> I can't even drive. Believe it or not, time travel might actually kind of be theoretically possible. Some guy called Einstein, don't know if you've heard of him, I certainly haven't, suggested way back that there could be such thing as an Einstein-Rosen bridge in space, known to you or I as a wormhole. A wormhole is like a big tunnel in space and time, which theoretically would lead you from one point in space, or time, or both, to another when you go through it. Like the most exciting roller coaster ever. Hmm. Might need some help to explain this one. Here's Sam Neill explaining it in the hit romantic comedy Event Horizon. The shortest distance between two points is zero, and that's what the gateway does. It folds space so that point A and point B coexist in the same space and time. When the spacecraft passes through the gateway, space returns to normal. Yeah, that whole thing doesn't go particularly well for those guys. Anyway, no wormhole has actually ever been seen. It's just a theoretical concept, like people actually being polite in public transport. But many scientists like Kip Thorne and Eddie Redmay, I mean Stephen Hawking, agree that wormholes could well exist. The only thing about wormhole time travel is that it's not quite time travel as we know it. See, theoretically, if we could harness wormholes, we'd be able to travel to the future and back to the present again. But once we're in the future, we'd only be able to travel back to the present in which we made the wormhole, not back any further. Ergo, it's <laughs> a clever word. Ergo? We'd never be able to go back to see the rise of the Roman Empire, or see the Beatles live in concert, or witness my birth. That past is theoretically impossible to access now. All done. Case closed. Shaboom. But we can't do anything about it now anyway, because wormholes are predicted to exist by people like the Hawkster, but at near microscopic levels, according to the handily named website space.com. Another reason why we can't do this now is because, like a very badly supplied gym department in a high school, we just don't have the equipment. We'd need to stabilise the bloody thing to make it safe to travel through once we've stretched it open, using stuff called exotic matter, which sounds like a particularly cheap brand of fake tan. Exotic matter contains a lot of negative energy density, which apparently would be enough to keep the wormhole open as we venture across time and space. Unfortunately, that's stuff we just don't have right now. However, there is technically another way or two outside of wormholes to go about it. Take string theory, for example. Cosmic strings aren't just an out-of-this-world cello quartet, but they're also long stretches of energy in the universe left over from when the universe was made. Apparently, they contain absolutely loads of mass, which means getting two of them together could potentially warp space-time as we know it to such a degree 
We could dive into it like a big jacuzzi of future. Lovely. Some kind of hot tub time machine. However, yet again, we don't actually know whether or not cosmic strings exist. And also yet again, we would need a big F off amount of technology that a, and I'm quoting scientist Richard Gott here, super civilization would have, not us. We're simply splendid, not super. We're like Clark Kent's and the cosmic strings need Superman to work. Supermans. Supermans. Supermen. Supermen. But apparently there are natural time machines all around us, and I don't just mean anti-wrinkle cream. Stephen Hawking, yes, him again, he's a bit of an expert in this kind of thing I hear, says the key to a sort of time travel is a supermassive black hole. <laughs> this is because of time dilation, aka everything the plot to Interstellar was based on. Well, that and shouting, Murph. If you were to orbit a black hole, your time on your plush space pad would be half the time that's actually going on on Earth. So say if you left tomorrow and orbited it for 12 years, you'd come back and it would be 2040, which is double 12. See what I did there? He's absolutely right. All your friends would be old, but you'd still be a spry young thing, all thanks to the density of a supermassive black hole. Summer solar. Oh, sorry, I couldn't help it, couldn't help it. So this, in effect, would be time travel, just not popping a TARDIS or DeLorean instantaneous time travel. It would also be, for lack of better words, extremely f***ing dangerous. One wrong calculation and you could fall into the black hole for good, like trickling down space's plug hole. Except there's probably less hair clogging it up. Ugh. Just gross myself out. Ugh. 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 <laughs> Oh, that was awful, sorry. Faking gagging, and I actually feel sick. You could always try travelling faster than the speed of light, which is technically impossible, or flying really, 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 really fast around the Earth. I hear that works too. So there you go, time travel is technically, theoretically possible. It's just we uh, haven't found the component parts out in space yet, or have the technology to do anything with them. And we can't travel back to the past before we stabilise the wormhole, so... Yeah, that's why there's no future people among us annoying us, because they couldn't travel back here because we haven't got the wormhole yet. Oh god, this whole thing's giving me such a headache. And I'm going to be explaining it. If you've got a question you want professionally answered by 101 Max, then tweet us or comment us saying, I've always wondered. Plus your question and we'll give it a bloody good do-over next week. That sounds weird, I shouldn't have thrust it like that either. I don't think you saw that though, luckily, but now you're imagining it though, aren't you? <laughs> anyway, bye! What would I do if I had a time machine? I think if I had a time machine, I would go back and redo my audition for Peter in The Hunger Games. Shouldn't have given it to Josh, that was a crime against God. Obviously still give it to Jen, I'll, I'll work opposite Jen. Um, we have a thing, we have a chemistry, obviously that's, that's predetermined that he just doesn't have with her, frankly. And it would have been better for any, anybody, it would have been a better Hunger Games movie for a start. Uh, I'd do more than cover myself in cake dirt to hide myself. It's rubbish. Can't believe he even won actually. He should have he should have died in the first one, Peter. Or he shouldn't have if I was in it though. That's the that's the thing. That's the thing. Or maybe I'd go back and redo that whole bit. <laughs> anyway, too late. Bye!